Have you ever wondered why some people seem to get everything they want in life while other people never seem to make it? As humans, we live a life allowing ourselves to be controlled by our thoughts and our emotions and the cost, unfulfilled dreams, missed opportunities and a lifetime of regret. We're at a time right now where women's sport is being blasted into the limelight, which is so exciting, but is also going to come with pressure and expectation. The Australian statistics tell us that right now, 35% of elite athletes or elite performers suffer a mental health crisis, 35%. So that equates to around eight team members in a rugby league team. Emma Tonegato of the Cronulla Sharks rugby league team has spoken openly about her battle with imposter syndrome a lack of belief in who she is. Courtney Vine of the Australian Matildas team also has spoken about her battle with imposter syndrome. And it's not just us Aussies. Christina Kim, veteran professional golfer in the United States, has spoken about her experience with deep, dark depression and near suicide. In my experience of working with athletes and performers over the last 25 years is that they do not have a deep-seated belief in who they are. They may believe in what they do, but they do not believe in who they are. So when the challenges come, the ego definition of who they rely on, the athlete, the performer, is threatened. And this is where we see people suffer. A couple of years ago, I came across the works of Michael Singer. Michael Singer is a spiritual teacher, author, and highly successful businessman. Michael Singer says, we are a soul living in a human body. We have a mind, but we are not our mind. We just have one. And living this human life, the challenge is to get out of the mind. In June this year, Mandy, who has been my best friend for 20 odd years, now is my partner. That's a whole other TED talk. She decided that she was going to walk the Camino. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Camino is an 800 kilometre trek from France to Spain. She did ask me if I would like to go, to which I replied very quickly, no, thank you. But Mandy is a strong, determined being. And when she is drawn to do something in life, she will follow. So off she went, landed in France, walking the Camino. For those of you who don't know, the first part of the Camino is referred to as the physical section. This is right up Mandy's alley. Physical trekking, up hills, mountainous terrain, and she did this with ease. The middle section, however, they refer to as the mind. The middle section is where you walk through a place called the Macedo Desert. Barren landscapes, unending trails, nothing to distract you from your mind. And it was during this time that I saw Mandy go to a very dark place. It was a struggle for her. It was a struggle for me. We were on opposite sides of the world, unable to help and unable to push her through this. I remember having a phone conversation with her one night and speaking to her about the things that were going on in her mind that were causing her the pain and the destruction in the moment that she was in. I said to her, there is no problem your mind is creating the problem. But you see, she was stuck so much in the mind that she could not get her way out. So I said to her, right, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes and I just want you to go through the mental chitter chatter that you have been consuming yourself with day and night, day and night. And I just want you to notice that as you do that, who is actually listening? And she said, me. I was like, that's right, you. You are listening to your mind. You are not the same as your mind, you just have one. 
but you are listening to everything your mind tells you. And your mind is just an accumulation of all the conditioned experiences that you've ever had in life. So I said to her, I want you to give your mind a name. I want you to name your mind right now so that you can maintain the awareness that you are not your mind. You are not one and the same and it is your choice as to whether you listen to the things that your mind is telling you. So she named her mind Beryl. And Beryl is the one that has caused her all these problems along the way. Beryl is the one that has told her she can no longer do this. Beryl is the one telling her it's too hard. Beryl is the one telling her she's never going to make it to the end. So I said to her, so here's the thing. You and Beryl, you need to break up. You need to cancel her passport, pack her bags and send her, send her on her way because you need to be able to work out how to walk the rest of this without Beryl creating the problems that you have right now. And over the following few days, I saw Mandy go from the depths of a really, really dark place to exhilaration and wonderment as she reached the end of this trail, a lightness in her that I'd never seen before. And it was that moment right there that I realised that this was the trick, this trick that I've actually been using for so many years, particularly with children in my practice, is actually the secret to do what Michael Singer tells us to do, to get out of the mind. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to talk to Bo Scott. Bo Scott is a highly successful rugby league player, has played for many years, played for our state and our country, and he was coached by Wayne Bennett, arguably the best coach of our time. I was fascinated to understand how Bo ticked because I knew that Wayne Bennett had labelled Bo the most mentally resilient player that he had ever coached. So I sat down and I chatted to Bo and Bo said something to me that really stuck out. And he said, Kate, footy's a really simple game. Keep it simple. And then I laughed because that is exactly what humans do not do is keep it simple. So we're going to keep it really simple. What I want you all to do is just close your eyes for me. And I want you to imagine that you are an awareness detective. And I want you to take your awareness to your mind. And I want you to notice the mental chitter chatter that goes around and around and around. Much like my mental chitter chatter before I came here today. I can't do this. What was I thinking? Who would ever think a TED talk was a great idea? So we need to be aware that that is not me, that is my mind. When we're aware that that is our mind that causes those problems for us, all we need to do is give that mind a name. I call mine George. George is the one who creates all my problems. George is the one that tells me that I need to do this or I need to not do this. George is the one who creates all the pain and destruction. So when I know that it's George who creates all of my problems for me, I have come to accept that George and I are ready to break up, that I no longer need to live through George. What I do need is to connect to my heart space, the lighthouse, the compass, the internal GPS system, the place where desire and drive and passion are alive and burning inside you. The energy of drive and passion and desire is your guide. It is your pathway showing you and teaching you and trying to get your attention to tell you that this is what is in alignment with you. And all you need to do is listen. So I asked you when I first came out here today, have you ever wondered why some people seem to get everything they want in life and other people never seem to make it? The people who live through their heart and allow themselves to be guided 
by their energy of drive and desire, the passion and trust and know that deep down that will take them exactly where they're meant to be in life. Are you ready to break up with your George? <laughs>